Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and I'm here with my co-host, Alara Skye. Today, we're gonna talk about how mitochondria work hand in hand with certain immune cells to fight infections and help calm autoimmune storms. We'll explore some recent findings on the role these tiny powerhouses play in controlling inflammation and why they're so central to our overall health. Thank you, Ethan. I'm glad to be here. The focus of our discussion is the partnership between macrophages and mitochondria. Macrophages are those immune cells that keep our bodies clean by gobbling up germs, while mitochondria are small structures in our cells responsible for generating energy. But, as we'll discuss, Mitochondria also send signals that help macrophages manage inflammation effectively. One of the key themes here is how these two work together to regulate inflammation. We often hear about macrophages as our cleanup crew, the cells that devour invading pathogens. And we hear about mitochondria as our cellular energy plants. However, the most fascinating discovery is that mitochondria also help macrophages produce something called IL-10 which is basically the off switch for inflammation. Exactly. In simpler terms, IL-10 tells the immune system to stand down once the threat has passed. In a healthy system, your body needs that calm down signal so the inflammatory response doesn't keep raging. Chronic inflammation is linked to autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus and can also drive severe complications during infections. Therefore, IL-10 is crucial to shutting off that inflammation alarm before it does long-term damage. Let's delve deeper into the specifics. The process starts in the mitochondria's complex three. That part of the electron transport chain creates a molecule called superoxide, which is a type of reactive oxygen species. This superoxide is actually a signal that prompts macrophages to release IL-10. Without this signal, the immune response doesn't get the command to quiet down and uncontrolled inflammation can wreak havoc on the body. There was a study published in Science Advances, where researchers tested what happens when they interfere with the complex three switch in macrophages. They essentially broke it on purpose in mice. When those mice faced infections like the flu, they got significantly sicker than normal mice. The reason? Their macrophages produced little to no IL-10 because that superoxide signal wasn't there to trigger it. That's an important demonstration. The mice with disabled complex three couldn't make interleukin-10 effectively, so inflammation persisted, leading to worse outcomes. It shows that mitochondria aren't just providing power for the cells. They're also essential for signaling that turns inflammation off. This role goes far beyond just energy production. Precisely. A related part of this research involved trying to supply alternative oxidase, which offers a different way to generate energy. While it helped restore some level of energy, it didn't fix the superoxide signaling problem. In other words, you can't simply prop up the cell's power supply and hope to curb inflammation. The superoxide signal is critical for activating IL-10, and that's what truly prevents the inflammatory storm. Another interesting layer is that this breakdown in complex three didn't stop all macrophage functions. When researchers gave macrophages a repair signal called IL-4, the macrophages could still heal tissues. That suggests macrophages have two gears, a fight gear that needs superoxide to release IL-10 and a healing gear that operates well without it. Exactly. So macrophages can switch between those modes depending on whether they need to attack pathogens or help repair tissues. This dual functionality shows just how sophisticated our immune system is. It means that while superoxide is essential for controlling inflammation in the fight mode, it's not always necessary for the healing mode. Let's address why boosting IL-10 matters. Higher IL-10 levels mean a stronger anti-inflammatory response, which is beneficial in autoimmune disorders and in cases of severe infection. When your body can effectively say all clear, it reduces the risk of prolonged inflammation that can damage tissues and worsen disease. That's right. If you have lupus, multiple sclerosis, or rheumatoid arthritis, your immune system is overactive, attacking healthy tissues. With more IL-10, your immune system can quiet down more efficiently, minimizing that self-attack. 
The same principle applies to serious infections, where inflammation can spin out of control and lead to severe complications. One straightforward way to naturally boost IL-10 is by increasing butyrate levels. Butyrate is a short-chain fatty acid your gut bacteria produce when you consume fiber-rich foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans. There's growing evidence that butyrate enhances the signaling capabilities of complex 3, leading to more superoxide production and thus greater IL-10 release. Correct. Another perk of butyrate is that it nourishes cells in your colon, helping maintain a robust gut lining. This prevents harmful substances from leaking into your bloodstream, a condition sometimes referred to as leaky gut. Additionally, better gut health generally equates to better immune function. One note of caution, though. If your gut health is poor, you should increase your fiber intake gradually to avoid issues like endotoxin release. Butyrate isn't the only method to boost IL-10. Sunshine, or more specifically ultraviolet bead light exposure, also contributes to higher IL-10 levels. However, there's a concern about the type of fatty acid stored in your skin. Linoleic acid, or LA, found in seed oils, can accumulate in your tissues. When UV rays hit that LA-rich skin, it can trigger inflammation and DNA damage. That's why it's recommended to reduce seed oils for about six months before subjecting your skin to significant sun exposure, especially during peak midday hours. Over time, your body can clear some of that accumulated linoleic acid if you're avoiding processed foods and seed oils. In the future, we might refer to them simply as puffs, short for polyunsaturated fats, which is more intuitive than calling them pufas or acids. Exercise is another powerful way to raise IL-10. One study found a 27-fold increase in IL-10 immediately following a workout. That's significant because it means even moderate physical activity can prime your immune system to resolve inflammation more effectively. Right. And there are also specific foods and spices you can add to your meals. Garlic, for instance, is known to support IL-10 production. Licorice and black cumin seed oil have shown benefits, but licorice in particular carries some contraindications, especially for those with high blood pressure or kidney and liver issues. Always be mindful of your personal health status when adding new herbs or spices. All of these habits tie back to maintaining healthy mitochondria. If mitochondria are compromised, your energy production drops, which can fuel chronic inflammation. You'll see that show up as more frequent infections, prolonged inflammation, and an overall dip in well-being. Exactly. Mitochondria are vulnerable to several toxins, including linoleic acid in processed foods, endocrine-disrupting chemicals like xenoestrogens, and even pervasive electromagnetic fields. Reducing your exposure to these factors can help protect your mitochondria and, by extension, your immune system. An additional point is the importance of targeted carbohydrate intake. Most adults need around 200 to 350 grams of carbohydrates daily to support mitochondrial function. People with higher activity levels might require even more. But if you have gut issues, it's often advised to start with easily digestible carbs like white rice and fruits. Over time, as your gut heals, you might diversify and include more fibrous vegetables and whole grains. The idea is to power your mitochondria without overloading your system with foods that irritate a compromised gut. This balanced approach keeps energy production steady while preventing issues like dysbiosis or inflammatory flares which is why naturally supporting IL-10 production becomes a top priority, especially for those dealing with chronic inflammatory or autoimmune conditions. Before we wrap up, let's highlight the main points. First, macrophages and mitochondria collaborate to manage inflammation by producing IL-10, and complex 3 within mitochondria is central to this. Second, superoxide from complex 3 acts as a flare signal, leading to IL-10 release. But if complex 3 is disrupted, inflammation can run rampant. Boosting IL-10 naturally can be achieved through lifestyle habits. Eating fiber-rich foods to increase butyrate, getting moderate sun exposure once you've cut back on seed oils, staying active, and using spices like garlic and possibly black cumin seed oil. Fourth, watch out for factors that harm mitochondria, linoleic acid, endocrine-disrupting chemicals, 
and electromagnetic fields. Finally, don't forget carbohydrates. Providing adequate carbs helps your cells, including macrophages, remain energized and effective. All of these actions strengthen your body's ability to keep inflammation in check. Remember, mitochondria are not just passive energy factories. They're also active players in immune regulation, and they need care and attention to function optimally. Precisely. By understanding this partnership between macrophages and mitochondria, we can make informed choices about what we eat, how we exercise, and how we manage our environment. Small adjustments can significantly impact your body's capacity to fight off infections and mitigate autoimmune flare-ups. Well, that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you for tuning in to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and I appreciate everyone listening. And I'm Alara Skye. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've gained new insights into how mitochondrial health ties into inflammation control and overall wellness. Be sure to apply these tips in your daily life. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.